So what I want to go over now is how to take into account significant figures when you're doing calculations. So um, type of calculation I want to go over is multiplication or division. So when you're multiplying or dividing numbers in chemistry, what I want you to think about when you're determining how to write your answer is I want you to think about significant figures. So for example here, we have 5.15 times 2.3. When we're trying to figure out how to write our answer, we have to think about the fact that 5.15 has three significant figures. 2.3 has two significant figures. This means that once we get our answer on our calculator, we're going to have to round our answer to the same number of significant figures as 2.3 since 2.3 has the least number of significant figures of the two numbers that we're multiplying. Therefore, our answer is going to be 12 with only two significant figures. So before we go on to addition and multiplication, which are a little bit more complex, I want you to practice this with the um, numbers on the next slide. So with these, I've already figured out what the calculator would tell you, and I want you to now round each answer that the calculator has given us to, this, to the appropriate number of significant figures. So if we look at the first example here, we have 3.24 times 7.0. When we're doing this, we have to look at our two numbers. 3.24 has three significant figures. 7.0 has only two significant figures. So this one has three. This one has two. Our answer, because of the fact that 7.0 only has two significant figures, should be rounded to 23, which will only have two significant figures. Okay, so I want you to do the same thing with the other problems here and round it to the appropriate number of significant figures, and then we're going to go over the answers. So why don't you pause this screencast and try those. Okay, so let's go over the answers that you guys got. With the first one here, if you look at 100.0, has four significant figures. 23.7 has three significant figures. This means our answer should also have three significant figures. So I'm going to round this to 4.22 grams per centimeters cubed. Our next problem. 0 0.02 has one significant figure. Remember the decimals present. We start from the left. Two is our first non-zero digit. 2.371 has four significant figures. So our answer should only have one significant figure. Be 0 0.05 centimeters squared. Our next problem our first number has two significant figures. We have decimal absent. We start from the right-hand side. We start counting with one. We have two significant figures. 3.0 also has two significant figures. Our decimal is present. We start from the left-hand side. We have two significant figures. So our answer is going to have two significant figures. So we're not going to change the fact that the answer is around 200 and something. So we're actually going to round this to 240, but you notice I do not use a decimal. That means the zero at the end is not significant. We have decimal absent. We start counting from the four. We have two significant figures. I could also write this as two. 
times 10 to the 2 meters per second. Our next one has five significant figures and three significant figures. So we're going to round our answer to three significant figures. And again, I'm going to not change how large this number is, but I'm going to write it as 5870 pounds feet. Or I could write it as 5.87 times 10 to the third pounds feet. The last one, we have a number with four significant figures and three significant figures. Our answer, we're going to round it to three significant figures. So that will become 2.96 grams per milliliter. Okay, so now I want to go over how to do multiple, I mean, addition and subtraction. Like I said, addition and subtraction are a little bit more difficult for students. So let me pull this up. So here we have two numbers that we're adding. When we do this, you can think about we drop a line after the last significant figure in the number with the least number of significant figures after the decimal, our answer would be rounded to 7.9, so it's to the tenths place. So 4.1 is the least precise of these two measurements. Likewise here, we have two numbers. 130 is the least precise of those two numbers. So we're going to drop a line, in this case, after that three. So we're going to round our answer to 350 grams. So when you're doing these kind of problems, it's very helpful to actually write out the numbers so that they're directly below each other, lining up the decimal or lining up the understood um, decimal. So I want you to try these numbers here. Let's do the first one together first. So with the first one, let me just bring this to this view. So for the first one, we have, I'm gonna write this up at the top. We have 3.24 and 7.0. So if you notice here, 7.0 has the least number of digits following the decimal. We're gonna drop the line there after that zero. So we have 10.24, but to um, we're gonna round it to the tenths place, and this answer is gonna become 10.2 meters. So what I want you to do now is try the other five problems. So take the answer the calculator gives you and round it to the correct number of significant figures, and then we will go over the answers. Okay, so let's go over the answers now. Hopefully you guys pause this, try those problems, and let's try these. Okay, the first one is 100.0 minus 23.73. So if we look at these two um, numbers, we see that 100.0 has the least number of digits following the decimal. So we're going to drop the line after that zero. We get 76.27. This means we're going to have to round this to 76.3 grams. Okay, the next one, we have 0 0.02. We have 2.371. We have, and the first one goes to the hundredths place. The second one goes to the thousandths place. So we're going to drop the line after that hundredths place. That's the least precise number. 
we have what the calculator gave us. And we're going to round that to 2.39 centimeters. Okay, the next one, I'm going to have to erase a little bit here to make room. But the next one, we have 713.1 minus 3.872. We have a number that only goes to the tenths place, a number that goes to the thousandths place. We're going to drop that line after that one. We get on our calculator 709 point. What's that? So we get 709.228. We're going to have to round it to the tenths place. So it's going to be 709.2 liters. With the next one, we have 18.2 and 3.37. We have the tenths place and the hundredths place. We're going to drop the line after that tenths place. We get from our calculator 1821. 0.57. We see we're going to have to round this to the tenths place. So this is going to become 1821.6 pounds. And then the last one, we have 2.030 minus 1.870. Our calculator gives us 0.16. If we look at it, we have one number to the thousandths place, a second number to the thousandths place. So we're actually going to drop the line after that thousandths place. So in order to give the correct number of significant figures for this, we're going to have to actually add a zero, 0 0.160 to give our answer in the thousandths place. And that's going to give us... 0.160 milliliters. Okay, so now I have a pro problem set on Google Classroom. I want you to try that, see how you're doing with this. And then if you have questions, you can email me.